And yes, that is a Grease reference. Ref, 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 ref. <laughs> oh gosh, this light is this light is special today. And by special, I mean a bit pants. Hello everyone and welcome to Inside Number 23, my podcast about sewing and knitting and my crafty life in general. My name is Katie and I am coming to you from a very bleak and grey and overcast Hertfordshire which is just north of London which is where I live with my husband Emrys and our little pug Rolly. You can find me on both Instagram and Ravelry as Miss Lavelli. We also have a Ravelry group for Inside Number 23 where you can um, kind of stop by, have a little chat about various things, including the Harry Potter cal that I am currently hosting. And you really, really should join because we have, if I do say so myself, a fantastic bunch of people on the Ravelry group. And it brings me a huge amount of joy every single day when I go and see who's been posting and that type of thing. So head on over and join. I want to say a big hello and welcome to anybody who it's your first time visiting with me this week. I hope you enjoy spending a little bit of time with me talking about some crafty bits and pieces and a huge, huge big kiss. And uh, welcome back to anyone who has been here previously. Thank you for coming and spending more time with me if you already have done in the past. It's actually Easter Sunday today, so it's the 27th of March. So yeah, happy Easter to anyone who's celebrating and um, yeah, enjoy some, some nice family time and some chocolate eggs and all of that good stuff. It's been a really good week in Inside Number 23 this week, a really, really good week. Um, I've had some really nice time off with Emrys, we've had some time off together which has been lovely. We actually went to the cinema twice this week and we haven't been to the cinema for months and we went twice which is awesome but I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. Last week I was working super super hard and I hadn't really had that much time to get much done and this week is kind of the polar opposite of that because I've had so much time to get on with the projects that I want to and so I have lots of stuff to be sharing with you this week. I also want to kind of comment on the lighting in this episode and yes, it's pretty vile, let's be honest, it's pretty dark. And that's because I'm sitting where I usually sit, in my room with my natural light and everything, but um, we have a storm coming across the UK at the moment, in particular the south of the UK. And believe it or not, this storm is called Storm Katie. <laughs> at first I found that really funny and then I kind of found it sad that there was a storm that had the same name that I do that's that's probably gonna cause some real damage to um, houses in the south of the UK. And so I hope it isn't too awful, but yes, it's very grim. Um, it's very rainy, very stormy. So I apologize for the light, but at the moment, there's nothing really that I can do to help that. Um, I'm trying my very best to get as much natural light as possible, but gonna have to deal with the fact that things are gonna look a little bit off this week. So I apologize for that. Another thing I wanted to talk about is, as you will know from my little introduction, I have finally been able to change my Ravelry name. Yay! <laughs> so if you don't know, I have been having a lot of problems changing my name um, on Ravelry. I wanted it to be the same as my Instagram name so that there was more consistency, so that it was less confusing for everybody finally been able to change it. I wasn't able to change it the regular way. I had to get in touch with the with the help desk I guess on Ravelry. I sent them a couple of emails explaining my problem. They looked into it. They couldn't see why it wasn't letting me do it but they manually override, overrode, overrided. They changed it for me. So now I am Miss Lavelli on both Instagram and Ravelry. Other things I've been getting up to this week. This week I used my Swift um, for the first time. So if you remember a couple of weeks ago I shared with you that Emrys had purchased me um, a Swift to use with my ball winder and this week I had an opportunity to use it for the first time and I love it. It makes winding yarn so much easier and it's got to the point now where I just want to wind all of the skeins that I have in my stash, which I know is not good practice. So I won't be doing that, but I really, really want to. I actually wound up my 
Colouring Book Yarns yarn. This is something that I purchased at the end of last year. It's actually a Christmas colourway. It's called the Merry Everything Hexy colourway. I think it's designed with Hexy Puffs in mind. Um, but look at this cake! And I think these colours are actually kind of spring-like as well because there's all these greens and yellows and pale pinks and neon pinks. I can totally see how it was a Christmas colourway, but I'm feeling like it would be quite appropriate for the springtime, so I shall be perhaps casting on some stripy socks when I've got a couple of other things off the needles. I will be casting it on soon because I don't want to leave it in this cake for long, but yay! Cakes off the Swift! Very, very happy about that. In terms of what I'm drinking today, I'm actually drinking um, some tea that got sent to me this week um, in a little parcel, which I shall be talking about in just a second. This is green tea, but it's tropical. So it's a blend of green tea with lots of tropical fruit infusion type things. And it's really, really tasty. And considering how bleak it is outside and how grim it is, tea is going a long, long way at the moment to, to make things very happy. Ugh, this lighting is really horrible. But I'm going to stop apologising about the lighting because that's going to get incredibly boring for you guys. Shall we look at something a little bit more fun? Uh, so this week I have been so, so lucky again to receive some wonderful things in the post. So let's get started with Super Snail Mail! <laughs> the first parcel that I received this week was an incredibly generous gift from Mina of the Knitting Expat podcast. So hi Mina, I hope you're doing well. Um, Mina's been all over the place recently. She, she podcasts from Bahrain, which is where she lives, but she's been back in the UK recently visiting family. She's also been to Rome and um, yeah been very very busy lots and lots of traveling and she was kind enough to when she was over in the UK to send me a little package full of goodies I just am completely overwhelmed Mina at what you sent me genuinely let me just show you a couple of the bits that are in here first up minis so yeah she sent me a whole selection of lovely minis my minis collection is so so, so healthy right now. And there are some fantastic colours in here. Mina, you have amazing taste in yarn. I mean, everybody knows that already, right? But so, so happy about that. She also sent me the cutest card. This card is amazing. The, the patterns on this and an absolutely lovely message. Thank you so much, Mina. And the tea that I am drinking today, the green tea with the um, tropical, is one of the many teas that she sent me. And all of these teas are a brand that I haven't actually tried before, I don't believe, which is the English Tea Shop. And she sent me a whole selection. We've got ginger peach, um, lemon and ginger, spiced red fruit, pomegranate and black currant, and also chocolate superberry burst, all of which sound amazing and I can't wait to to try them and I must say that Emrys is also um, angling for at least a couple of those teas for himself so thank you. She also sent me some little washi tapes which I love. I'm obsessed with washi tape at the moment you guys absolutely love it. I am so excited about this. I've kept it and I haven't done anything with it so far because I wanted to show you guys but I have a Mina Makes project bag now. Look, it has little teas all over it, teapots and different kinds of tea. It says jasmine tea and um, orange pico tea. And oh, it's also lined with the most beautiful soft blue fabric and um, Mina's label just on the side there. <sighs> Mina, you've absolutely spoiled me. This is beautiful. I mean, the quality of this bag is just amazing. I absolutely love it. So thank you so, so much. And I'm so happy that I've shown it because now I can put some socks in here. And I have a lot of socks on the needles right now, you guys, but I shall show you those in a little bit. But I must say, the most special gift that Mina sent me in that was this notebook. Look at the little puglets. Oh my gosh, 
This is so what I would do to Rolly if I was that kind of person. Put a little top hat and a monocle on him. But this is just wonderful. And it's also blank pages. And I love notebooks with blank pages because it means that I can kind of scribble all over the page. And um, if you know anything about me, if you've watched my um, podcast previously, you'll know that the two things that I really can't turn down when I'm out um, kind of purchasing things are mugs and notebooks. They are like my crack. So... <laughs> Thank you, Mina. This is perfect. I do not know what I'm going to be using it for yet. I want to kind of keep it for something a little bit more special because it really is such a special notebook. But thank you. Thank you so, so much. And it just, I'd had a really tough day at work and your parcel was waiting for me when I got home. And it just brought me so much joy. And I'm just so happy to have met you in this way. And fingers crossed we will get to meet in the summer if we can both get to Fiber East and everything goes well. I really, really hope that we can because that would just be incredible. But moving on, I have also received some other lovely parcels this week. As you may recall, I'd be surprised if you didn't, um, my episode about the best tea ever, which was, um, of course, Tazo Tea, the passion flavour. And... Since that episode, the amount of people who have got in touch with me offering me Tazo tea, to send me Tazo tea, has been just incredible. You guys, you're so generous and the amount of people who want to act as my tea mule <laughs> is just lovely. <laughs> it's so sweet of you all. But one of the first people who, who kind of got in touch with me about that was um, Denise. Denise is earth tones girl on both Ravelry and Instagram and she's been very present in the Ravelry group. I've also seen her pop up on Instagram and that type of thing before she got in touch but she said basically I'd love to send you some tea and sent me the most wonderful message on Ravelry and I was just like if you really want to that would be amazing because you know how much I love that tea you guys and so I was expecting just um just some tea to be sent to me in the post but little did I know that I would be receiving a box full <laughs> of joy and can you imagine how surprised I was when this turned up on the doorstep I was like how much tea did you buy me Denise <laughs> but let me just show you what's going on in here so first of all Tazo tea! A whole box, a whole box of the passion Tazo tea. There are 20 tea bags in here and oh, I love them so much. I am pretty sure that I'm going to go through this really, really quickly. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's nice to have a huge box. And um, in case you don't remember from before, it is a blend of hibiscus flowers, tropical flavouring, um, licorice root, orange peel, cinnamon, rose hips, lemongrass and fruit juice extract and it is the best tea in the world. She sent me a little selection of progress keepers in here. There's a K, a little paw print and one that says do more of what makes you happy which were just beautiful. Love those. She also sent me a notebook Today I will be happier than a bird with a french fry. <laughs> and pumpkin pancake and waffle mix from Trader Joe's. I just love pumpkin so much as well. And so basically, Denise, you sent me two of my all-time favourite things in one parcel. So thank you. I, I, I haven't opened this yet because, again, I wanted to be able to have it um, to show you. But I think that tomorrow Emrys and I are going to be using this and having some pancakes, pumpkin pancakes, and I'm really excited about that. So I should mention absolutely everything that came in this box was beautifully wrapped up with tissue paper and ribbon and it was just full of joyful, joyful things. And one particular thing had a little label on it and I just want to read this to you. I'm a mug rug. I'm bigger than a coaster, smaller than a placemat, perfect for holding your coffee or tea, plus a little snack on the side. Use and don't be afraid to spill on me. Just wash gently in cold water, dry on low, and I'll be good as new. Enjoy. So I have never had a mug rug before. I didn't know that this was a thing. Um, it's probably something that everybody knows about except for me. Maybe it's just not something that we have in the UK. But I am all about the mug rug. The mug rug sounds perfect. And wait till you see this. Harry Potter mug rug! 
rug. Oh my goodness. So on this side, it's how beautiful is this? It's all been quilted, if you can see. Harry Potter fabric. And then on the back, it's a K in, in Hufflepuff colours. How just beautiful is this? The amount of care and time and attention that's been put into this, it's just incredible. And Denise, I can't thank you enough. This is going to be my go-to thing for when I'm having my, my tea um, and my little snack. And I'm just... I love it. I absolutely love it. This is going to live in the tea cupboard so that whenever I get some tea, I'll know that I have my little mug rug to put out and I can just sit and just enjoy the process of having tea and having this. I can't believe how much detail is in this. It's, it's beautiful. So thank you, Denise. Thank you so much. I'm actually going to put it down now and put my cup on top of it. <laughs> Yay, mug rug! So, Denise, if I haven't said it enough already, thank you, uh, because it just was amazing, and you're so kind and so sweet, and you really, really brought me so much joy and happiness this week, so, so much love to you. I have one more parcel that arrived in the post. I did tell you I've been very spoilt this week, you guys, but one more parcel arrived, and this was the last of the mini skein swaps that I have been doing recently, and the lovely lady who actually sent this to me was none other than Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast and Vool and Vine Yarns fame. And I know that Kristen has also received my parcel and, um, and really enjoyed it. So yay, I'm so glad about that. It was on her most recent episode. So if you want to see what I sent her, check out her most recent episode. But let me show you what she sent me. So first of all, she sent me the funniest card. So if you've been watching um, Kristen's podcast recently, you'll know that she um, really likes Edward Gorey, the um, illustrator, and this is one of his um, illustrations, and it's so funny. She also sent me um, a huge selection of tea, all wrapped up um, with this little drink me label. And Kristen, if we're going to be talking about people's handwriting, your handwriting is gorgeous. It's so much more interesting than mine. <laughs> so yeah, I love your handwriting too. But all the tea um, has been has been drunk up because it was really delicious. So thank you for the tea, Kristen. She also sent me um, minis. Minis, 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 minis. Hooray. And they're all labeled. I'm really, really excited about these minis, you guys, because the majority of them are Kristen's yarn. They're Vool and Vine yarns, and I'm obsessed with Kristen's yarn, and the more of that that I can have, the better. So I have in here Fairy Hair, Love Song, oh, those colours are incredible, Black Pearl, so pretty, and Enjoy the Silence which I am obsessed with. How gorgeous is that? The other two minis that she sent me, I'm just as excited about because they're both Jinx yarns and I love Jinx yarns. And something that I would like to say is that um, Lara of Jinx yarns also has a podcast, The Dyer's Notebook, which I love. And she mentioned me on one of her most recent episodes. And if you are watching Lara, then Hi, thank you so much for mentioning me and I absolutely adore everything you do. So yay, and now I have two little minis of your yarn. <laughs> so um, one of these is on her Glitz sock base. This is Lantern Festival. Look at the sparkles, ooh, the sparkles. So pretty, oh, just amazing. And even more exciting than that, on her Power Sock base, I have some gingerbread house. Can you, if you guys were watching any podcasts around Christmas time last year, this yarn was making the rounds and I was so jealous that I wasn't able to get hold of any and now I finally get to try some and oh, I'm so excited. This is gonna be awesome in my blanket. I've just noticed that the light has really improved now. So hopefully it will stay like this for the rest of the episode. One of the other things that Kristen sent me was something that just brought me so much joy, which was this tiny little nest here of fibre, which she's written on here as a combination of Superwash Merino, Polworth, Silk and Stellina. 
and it's gorgeous. Look at how cute. And Kristen actually hand dyed and hackled this into this little nest for me. And I can't wait to play with this. This is very, very special. I shall not be um, kind of spinning this up until I'm a little bit more experienced with, with the old spindle. But um, yeah, it's so soft. It's like um, a little pet. So I think for now it's going to sit on the shelf above my sewing desk just so I can, I can look at it and pet it every so often because it's so cute. But wait, there's more. Kristen is one of the kindest, most generous, wonderful people in the whole world. She has actually sent a prize for you guys. So, um... This prize, I don't have a purpose for it yet. I am kind of holding it back for something in the future. Look at this. This is um, Kristen's Volca base. It's one of my favorite of her bases. It's the same base that I use for my Outlander shawl, so I can attest to just how luxurious and wonderful this is. And it is her Gashley Crumb colorway, which I'm obsessed with. Um, it's a combination of um, merino, cashmere, and nylon. And just look. Oh, yes. In the future, this is going to be winging its way to one of you guys. Like I said, I haven't quite decided what it's going to be for yet, but bear in mind, this little guy, it has a future with one of you lovely people. But because Kristen is, as I said, so generous and so wonderful, she wasn't content with just sending something for you. She also sent me something, and this is not just anything. This is something so special, so thoughtful, I am blown away. You may remember a couple of episodes ago that I was kind of raving about Kristen's newest shawl pattern, um, the Vildas Mir, and how beautiful it was, and how she had knit it up in um, a skein of her own yarn, which was so stunning, and how I had lost my mind over it. Kristen sent me the yarn. Oh my gosh, you guys. This is her narwhal base. So it is um, a 70-20-10 combination of blue face Leicester silk and cashmere and the colour is the Venus flytrap colour. And oh my goodness, I am so in love, so in love. Look, it goes with my Venus flytraps. <laughs> and this is going to be Kristen's Vildesmere because I have to make that shawl with this yarn. I just have to. There's no question. It's something that has to be done. And I think it's going to be a lovely kind of spring, autumn shawlette kind of thing to wear. And, oh, I love it. It's beautiful. I feel like this green is just the perfect green. I'm so happy with it and I and I absolutely love it and I can't thank you Kristen enough for sending it to me. I'm going to resist um, caking this up for as long as possible because look at how beautiful it looks in the skein and I do need to finish up a couple of other shawl projects before I can cast something new on but as soon as I have done that this is getting cast on and I am so excited. I just love it. Just the best, just the best Kristen. Everything she does. I mean, look at these colours together. Oh. Kristen, you're a genius. You're a yarn dyeing genius. And I can't thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm, new pet for me. So next up is For the Love of Pod, where I talk about um, a couple of podcasters that I have been watching this week who have been bringing me particular amounts of joy. And I have two different podcasts to mention this week. First up is a podcast who has been around for um, a little while. You've probably heard of her. If you haven't heard of her, where have you been? Because she is awesome and you will love her, so you should go and watch her right away. And that is lovely, lovely Gabby of the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. So, hi Gabby! I think Gabby is amazing. She is so talented. Can we talk about how talented this girl is? She has her own business, um, the Aponokorgi um, shop on Etsy. She makes project bags. She also hand dyes yarn. She comes up with the most beautiful colours. Recently, she showed on her podcast, I think the colourway is called My Cold Dead Heart. I hope that's right, Gabby. Um, but it's just amazing. And 
Also, of course, she has the, the help of having a selection of, of lovely puppies on her podcast. You know, I'm a fan of the puppies. Uh, she has two beautiful corgis who just make my heart sing whenever I see them. They're absolutely gorgeous. And the projects that she works on, her taste in yarn, her, like I said, her abilities with, with yarn dyeing. She's fascinating. She's wonderful to watch. I have been enjoying her so, so much recently and you should all go and give her a little watch too. The other person that I would like to mention is a new to me podcast and also I think just new in general and that is Devon of the Francophy Knits podcast. And I was aware of Devon on both Ravelry and Instagram because she has kind of popped up um, on my feed. Um, she's absolutely lovely. She kind of comments on things and gets involved and that's so nice. And then I realised that she was the same Devon of the Francophy Knits podcast. And I just think she's great. She's really, really lovely to spend some time with. She makes the most incredible knitwear. Most recently, the thing that kind of blew me away is that she's working on the waiting for rain shawl she's kind of striped the the shawl the pattern and it's just great Devon you're enabling me and that can only ever be a good thing <laughs> so again go and watch Devon give her some love and subscribe to Francophy Knits so after all that talk about other lovely knitters, how's about I show you what I've been getting on with this week in my What's On My Needles segment? So like I said, unlike last week where I was kind of complaining about the fact that I had hardly had any time to do any knitting, this week I have had so much more time and I have some very exciting bits and pieces to share with you. First up, for the second week in a row, I have finished objects! Yay! Finished objects, finished objects. Okay, so the observant amongst you will notice that they still have um, tails hanging off them. That's because I haven't actually blocked these yet. I have sewn in the edges, but I like sewn in. I have sewn in these ends, but I like to leave um, the tail still attached and not chop them off until I've actually blocked them. So these do need to be blocked, but check them out. They are finished. Whoop, whoop. So these... These lovely socks are for my Harry Potter cowl. Well, they're kind of for my Harry Potter cowl because I can't really enter my own cowl, but they're also for the lovely Candice of Pin Feathers and Pearls Stripey Socks cowl. And look at how amazing they are. So they are um, made with London House Yarns, amazing stuff of London House Yarns. You should definitely check out her um, her stuff and her shop because she's awesome. And this is the Four Founders colorway. So it's Harry Potter, Hogwarts inspired, and it has the colours of Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and Slytherin, all the way down. And I also used some black opal yarn for my fish lips kiss heel and my rounded toe. And I am so happy with these. Um, so, so happy. Um, they've been absolutely amazing to work on. I've loved them. It's true what everybody says about self-striping yarn. It it moves so quickly because you think, oh, I'll just get to the next colour, oh, I'll just get to the next colour. And this even more so because you're kind of going, oh, I just want to get to the next house, just the next, <laughs> oh, I've done Hufflepuff, I'll finish up Slytherin and then I'll stop. And you just never put them down. And so these literally just flew off my needles this week. This is also a really good point to, um, in the episode, I think, to just um, have a quick chat about the Harry Potter cowl that I mentioned earlier. Um, so I am running a Harry Potter cowl at the moment for Inside Number 23, and it will be running until the end of April. We've got some incredible prizes that I have showed on previous episodes, so I won't go into them now. We have, on the Ravelry group, two pages dedicated to the Harry Potter cowl. I have the Chatter Thread, which has thousands well not thousands over a thousand comments on it now and I again want to say thank you to everybody who is commenting and so many people have commented that that thread has given them so much joy and just made their Ravelry experience really great and cheered them up on a bleak day and I feel exactly the same so come and join the chatter it's amazing and we also have a finished object thread where there is no chatter but we've already got a load of um, finished objects but yeah the idea is to knit something Harry Potter themed and enter your finished object into that FO thread but I shall be drawing prizes from both the FO thread and the chatter thread and yeah you've got another month to to enter so go nuts <laughs> 
so yeah another finished object two lots of finished objects in a, in as many weeks like that's amazing for me considering that I went almost a month with no finished objects whatsoever but in addition to that I also have a hoe yay for the hoe a hoe or if you don't speak the lingo a half finished object and this is my Sahamanahide socks and yes that is a Greece reference because I'm a fan of the musical theatre you guys and it always creeps into everything and why not sing on your podcast? Why not? This yarn is, of course, the um, Arnie and Carlos Summer Nights colorway, which was made for Regia, the self-striping, which is just gorgeous. I love it. Um, I popped in the heel from the Hermani's Everyday Sock pattern. I fancied doing a proper heel flap um, and a rounded toe. And I did a one by one twisted rib cuff, 20 rows of that which everyone knows is is my thing. And yeah, I have a hoe for my summer night sock and I just love this yarn. I know that this yarn has been has been doing the rounds and everyone seems to have made a pair of socks in this colorway, but I really really adore this. I do need to cast on the second sock. I do not want to have second sock syndrome, but I should get that on the needles this week. And yeah, super happy with this one. So there you go guys, you had a foe and a hoe all in one week. <laughs> So recently I've been on a bit of a sock kick and nothing has changed this week. In fact, it's actually got a little bit worse because I cast on a new pair of socks this week as well as all the other pairs of socks that I have been working on. But my theory behind that is that I finished my four founders socks. So when you finish a pair of socks, you have to cast on another pair, right? That's just the rules. I don't make the rules, I'm just upholding them. But before I show you those, I want to show you my progress with my fine and dandy socks. So these are living in my Freckled Whimsy project bag, my sock nanny bag by lovely carrier of Freckled Whimsy. Unicorns, yay! And here they are. They haven't made a huge amount of progress from, from last week because I have been very focused on the other socks. But can we just talk about this pattern? So this is the fine and dandy sock pattern. It's by The Sweater Co who's also known as Jess. So hello Jess, hi, I hope you're well. I'm making these for the fine and dandy um, knit along that is being hosted by Jacqueline of the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast and Amber of the um, Yarn Junkie podcast. I love working on these. These socks are just, everyone seems to be knitting them, which is incredible because Jess, can we just talk about Jess for a minute of the Sweater Co? Jess, you are incredible. I swear I have been kind of stalking you on your Instagram because if you if you're not following Jess on Instagram you really really need to because every single pair of socks that she creates every pattern that she does is just amazing. I love this pattern. It's one of my favorite things to knit on at the moment. Now that I finished some of my other socks, I really want to focus some time on getting this done. Like I said, I have cast on another pair of socks this week. This was kind of a combination of lots of different things that made me want to cast this on. I received my parcel last week from the amazing Jen for the expat yarn swap that was hosted by Mina. And the yarn that was sent to me, the more that I looked at it, all these colours and the Stellina and everything, the more I thought, this is Harry Potter themed yarn. And I know. I've got Harry Potter on the brain at the moment because of the cowl, and even if it wasn't for the cowl, I do tend to have Harry Potter on the brain. But these colours, I could see in the gold and the yellow, I was like, that's the golden snitch, and then we've got this grey and white, and I was like, that's Hedwig, and then we've got the black in there, and I was like, that looks like Harry's hair. So Hedwig and the snitch and Harry's hair colour, I was like, this is just Harry Potter themed yarn, it just doesn't know it until it got to me it didn't know that. I look on the Ravelry group for the Cal absolutely every day, the chatter thread and the finished object thread and one of uh, the lovely contributors to the chatter thread was VHC717 who I think your name is Virginie and I'm so so sorry if I'm if I'm not pronouncing that right um, but she was posting one of her finished socks and she was using the zigzagular pattern. And this is a pattern by Susie White, who actually is a member of the Prairie Girls Knit and Spin audio podcast, which I love. It's so much fun and it's one of my favorite things to listen to when I'm commuting in the car. So you should give them a listen if you haven't. But this pattern 
is basically a vanilla sock with an inset zigzag down one of the sides. Virginie, I'm so sorry if that's wrong, had named these socks the boy who lived socks. And I was just like, oh my goodness, I need, I need this pattern. This is perfect because this is like Harry yarn. This yarn feels like Harry to me and those socks were the boy who lived. So I commented and I said, this is amazing. I've been, because I had been looking at this pattern previously because I'd found it and favorited it and thought, oh, this would be a really nice pattern to use. And then to see that with that name, I was like, would you, be really upset if I actually also made these socks and called them the boy who lived socks. And she so generously enough said, of course I wouldn't have a problem with that. But she actually said that she got the idea from another Ravelry user who is actually Ucha, O-O-C-H-A, who is Jess. And she said that she had seen that Jess had had these socks with the same pattern with the name and she would have been like can I do that too? So <laughs> obviously lots of people love this idea and probably the zigzagular socks should have been named the boy who lives socks in the first place because so many people are loving that idea but suffice it to say these are the socks that I cast on so let me show you how much I've done so far. Zigzag! Can you see my zigzag? Isn't it amazing? How gorgeous is this yarn knitting up? And obviously you can't really see the zigzag unless they're stretched, but that's how they'll be when they're on the foot. It's a very addictive pattern. It moves very, very quickly because it is um, basically a vanilla sock with just a little bit of detail. So they don't take very long to, to knit up and they're just super appealing. Thanks Jen for the lovely yarn. And um, I'm loving using it. You got it so right when you sent me this yarn, so thank you. So that's quite enough about my socks. <laughs> I I do have a thing for socks right now, it's true. So the last thing that I have been working on this week is one of my shawls. Uh, I haven't given any love to either my Cozy Memories blanket again, which is ridiculous because the amount of minis that I have now, I really need to start doing something with those. Um, or my Outlander shawl, which is a shame because I was making a lot of progress on that. But I had a lot of socks on the go this week. It was much a sock week. But I did give some love to my Starry Night shawl also known as the Exploration Station. So the Exploration Station obviously is a pattern by Stephen West. First ever Stephen West pattern that I've worked on and I am knitting this as a part of the um, knit along that's being hosted by Eric of the Sticks Plus Twine podcast, who I've missed this week because he's on holiday and he hasn't done an episode and it really makes me sad that I haven't had my Eric time, but he's having an awesome time. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna resent him for, for having a lovely holiday. But I have made some serious progress on this. I have completed section four, which is the striped section here. And I am on to the final section. So the kind of the chevron edge, only to do a few more repeats of this. And then it will be done. And I can block it and it will be finished. And how amazing is that? It's quite a beast, it's really quite big, but I have really enjoyed working on this and I can't wait to get it blocked and finished because I think it's beautiful. It is quite a labour of love at the moment because the rows are very long now. They're around about, I think it's between 400 and 500 stitches on the needles and they're four millimetre needles. So these are relatively large stitches as well. So you can see it goes on for a long time so just to knit one row takes a really long time. <laughs> it is getting to the point where it gets pretty exhausting <laughs> doing it, particularly when you feel like you've been knitting forever and then you realise that you haven't even got halfway through the row. That's a little bit of a challenge. So like I said, a lot of knitting going on this week, a lot of knitting, which has been amazing. It's been so nice to have some time to actually work on these projects that I've really, really been dying to work on for such a long time. But next up, for the first time in quite a long time, I have one of my favorite segments doing a little return, and that is So What? So it's been a little while since I've been sharing kind of sewing projects with you on the podcast. If you remember from the beginning of this month, I am actually doing a Netflix and sew at the moment with one of the dresses from the movie Carol. And I will be showing you more of that next week. But for this week, I wanted to talk about a little project that is finally coming into fruition, which is just, I'm so excited about. So we are technically in spring in the UK now, 
even though you wouldn't know it considering how bleak and dreary it has been <laughs> over the past like couple of days but we are officially into spring and something that I always find when we get to spring is that I as I've said so often I'm an autumn baby I love autumn I love kind of winter I love that kind of fashion I like wearing thick jumpers lots of layers longer sleeves I have lots of cozy skirts thick tights so when it comes around to kind of spring summer I always find that my wardrobe is severely lacking in terms of cute outfits because the colorways that I'm drawn to as well are very kind of autumn winter things like tweeds and plaids and all of that kind of thing so even in my stash I don't actually have that many fabrics that would be suitable for spring summer wear so I wanted to rectify that this year. I definitely wanted to make sure that I had some cute outfits, some nice maybe throw on dresses and that type of thing to wear in the spring and summer. And one dress that has just been coming back to me and back to me week after week and kind of poking me and saying, you need to make me, is a dress that I first was introduced to by Kristen of the Orgasm podcast because she has made what feels like a hundred of these dresses <laughs> and she loves them. And that is the Anna dress. So the Anna dress is by a company called By Hand London. I saw this pattern on Kristen's podcast week after week. I've made another Anna dress, I've made another Anna dress. And Kristen, you enabled me because every single version of the dress that you made looked so wonderful. I just couldn't get enough of it. And I decided I'm gonna make the Anna dress. The thing that really pushed me over the edge in terms of actually purchasing the pattern, I've purchased the PDF. I just need to um, print it out, stick everything together, was another podcaster. And that was um, Melinda. Hi, Melinda, of the Under Woman podcast. Melinda, I was watching your podcast. Um, I don't, I think it's one of your most recent episodes and you were talking about fabric that you've purchased for sewing things for yourself. And Melinda showed a fabric and my heart literally skipped a beat and I just had to have this fabric. So forgive me, Melinda, for doing a complete copycat with you. But she showed some fabric, which is called, I believe, Pouncy Balls. It's from a Cat Lady series of fabric that was produced. This fabric is a lovely dusty green colour and it has little balls of yarn in reds and purples. It is 100% quilting cotton which isn't necessarily the best for a dress because it's going to have a lot of body and not necessarily a nice amount of drape but I figured for just a kind of um, easygoing day-to-day -day outfit it would it would look really cute. I have ordered the fabric, um, it's on its way. Obviously we're in a bank holiday weekend at the moment so it has been held up a little bit but fingers crossed it should be with me by next week and I'll actually be able to show it to you in person but I just had to share that um that soon to be project because I am so excited to do it and the idea of being able to run up a dress super quickly is just really getting my creative juices flowing in terms of getting back into a real handmade wardrobe and focusing on kind of garments specifically so I'm really, really excited about that. So before I go on to a little bit of general waffling about my week and about the things I've been getting onto, I'd like to introduce a new segment to the podcast. This is something that I have been wanting to do for quite some time. If you have been watching over the last couple of episodes, you will know that when I visited Unravel, I made a purchase. And that purchase was a drop spindle from the amazing Spin City UK. Up until recently, literally just yesterday, <laughs> I had not had the opportunity to crack out this spindle and get going, but now officially I have actually started spinning on a drop spindle, which obviously brings me to this newest segment, which is I'm spinning around. <laughs> so yeah, this is going to be my spinning segment. Um, I am a complete and utter newbie to absolutely everything to do with spinning. I have never had any experience of it previously. In terms of everything else that I do on this podcast, I've been knitting for a very long time. I have been sewing for a very long time. So this is pretty um, intimidating for me because usually um, I'm quite a perfectionist. So sharing a process with you that isn't 100% perfect is going to be a little bit difficult, but <laughs> I am trying to get over myself because I think it's going to be a really interesting journey from someone who literally knows nothing about spinning and there may be more of you out there 
But also the thing that I'm hoping is obviously there's going to be some of you out there that have a huge amount of experience in this type of thing. So I am automatically straight away asking for your help and your advice. But yeah, yesterday I, um, I cracked out the drop spindle. Um, lovely Nessa of the Kilter Craft podcast, when we did a mini skein swap, sent me some really, really cute little fibre samples from Nunoco Fibre. I hope that's how you say it. I'm so bad at pronouncing the names for these things, you guys, but Nunoco Fibre. And um, they were tiny little kind of puffs, little clouds of fibre. And I thought, before cracking into the massive braid that I purchased from Spin City UK, which is absolutely beautiful, and I want to kind of keep it for when I'm actually good at spinning, or at least a little better, I got one of these little bits of fibre, and I spun up the whole thing. And this is the result. So this little skein here, is my first ever skein of hand spun and it's got it's got issues it's got issues this color i believe is antique rose and oh my god it's beautiful it has such soft kind of pinks and peaches it has cream and then it has this beautiful antique green running through it as well but let me just kind of talk about a couple of the issues that i had with the spinning so if I unravel this a little bit, you can see very well here. Can you see all of these little guys? Twisty McTwisty. Like I said, I have no knowledge of kind of spinning at all. And I'm pretty sure that this isn't normal to get all these little um, kinks and um, twists up. So when I pull it out, it's flat. When I let it go, it's automatically twisting straight up. And I think that's because when I'm spinning, I'm putting too much twist into this into the spindle. Um, if you have any ideas about this, or you can kind of give me any advice, then then let me know what you think. But um, but yeah, I get these kind of little kinks because I think I'm over twisting. But the question that I have when you're spinning and you're drafting, are you supposed to <laughs> maintain that tension? So I've spun up my yarn, I've, I've drafted up, I've created um, a twist. Are you supposed to keep that tension in the twist when you wrap it up around the spindle? Or are you supposed to allow it to kind of be more relaxed before you twist it up? Because when I'm leaving the tension in the, the yarn that I've created, I get this kind of crazy kinky nature going on. But part of me feels that if I if I don't keep that much tension in the yarn and just let it kind of relax, surely that kind of undermines what I've just done in terms of twisting it. Does any of this make sense? I'm not entirely sure if it's making sense, but please let me know if you can give me a hand. Um, but this is the first one that I spun up. And I did share this on Instagram and I do want to say thank you to everybody who commented on that picture on Instagram because I was like, oh, look at it, it's so ugly. And everyone was like, it's not ugly, it's your first ever yarn that you've spun up and you've done really well. And and that was just really nice to, um, to hear that from so many people. Um, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you can really see when I unravel it here, the consistency is all over the place, which is what I was anticipating, to be honest, in terms of my drafting. It goes from like a super chunky all the way down to like the finest lace weight. But um, in terms of actually creating yarn, um, I am pretty impressed because this isn't something that I know anything about, like I said. Yeah, in terms of the twist, that's what's concerning me at the moment because there are some pieces that are like super kinky and over twisted and yet there are some of the larger chunks, for example this one here, that pretty much feels like it has no twist whatsoever. So um, yeah, any advice or help on my twisting conundrum would be much appreciated. I am very fond of it, really. My first little um, messed up bit of hand spun. <laughs> I am actually um, continuing. Um, I undid the second little sample that Nessa sent me, which is this beautiful colour. I think it was called Lagoon. Um, it's all soft blues, purples and greens. And the consistency isn't great. Again, there there is quite a wide variety of, of, of kind of... 
uh, size in the yarn that I've created so far. But I do feel considerably better about the, the twist. It's not kind of kinking up in the same way that my first one was. However, I am a little concerned that when I try and unravel this to skein it up, I'll get the same issue. Um, something that I have learned straight away, and again, um, correct me if I'm wrong, or um, say yes, that's what you should be doing. Um, before when I was kind of spinning, I was getting this whole big chunk and kind of attaching it on as is and trying to draft from this large, large chunk of fibre which wasn't particularly successful. What I've been trying to do now is kind of divide out a smaller piece of this long piece. So just grabbing some fiber and separating it out and um, attaching it that way. So kind of reducing the amount of fiber that I have to draw from. And I'm finding that kind of doing that preparation before I spin is helping a lot. I have been watching a couple of tutorials online, um, in particular the, the first, one that I have been trying out is on the Spin City UK YouTube channel, which is called the Park and Draft Method, which is basically spinning up, parking the spindle, and then allowing that twist to go up into your fibre. Um, some people have been suggesting that's not necessarily the best way to learn how to spin um, from comments. I found that it's relatively successful so far, but if you do have any um, help or advice on any of these kind of things, I would be so interested to know what your thoughts are. Like I said, complete beginner here, so any help and advice would be super appreciated. One thing that I have got on order is um, a book that so many people have suggested as a good resource, which is Respect the Spindle. So I have that on order. Hopefully it should be arriving this week. I'll be giving that a very, very thorough read. And yeah, this is the start of my little spinning journey. I am enjoying it immensely so far. I love this spindle. How pretty, how pretty is this? But like I said, any help, any advice, any additional resources you can kind of point me in the direction of would be much appreciated. Let's see how we get on. <laughs> so to finish up the episode this week, I thought I would try something a little bit different. This is not something that is kind of fibre related in any way. So if that's what you've tuned in for, then thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you again next Monday and I'm sending you so much love. But if you do want to kind of stick around and um, listen to a bit of my general waffle, <laughs> which is the name of this segment, then, then please do. Basically, my general waffle this week is going to be about some of the things that Emerson and I went to see at the pictures. I find it really interesting when you hear what podcasters are interested in other than their knitting so I thought that I would share um, a little bit of that side of me with you this week and hopefully in weeks to come as well. Um, as I said we haven't been to the pictures in such a long time like months and months and months and we we wanted to go maybe a week ago but then we didn't get around to it because we were both feeling a bit under the weather and then this week we had a lot of days off together, including two consecutive days off together, which basically never happens. So we decided that we wanted to go to the movies and there were two different films that we wanted to see. We couldn't decide which one, so we decided to go and see one one day and one the next day, because that's how we roll. And I love going to the pictures, I really, really do. A lot of it is to do with the snacks. I do love getting snacks. Um, I like salted popcorn and I like an array of ice cream. And <laughs> we went to two different um, two different cinemas and one had Ben and Jerry's um, ice cream, one had Baskin and Robbins. And Baskin and Robbins had my favorite flavor of ice cream ever. They have the um, butter pecan. That is my favorite ice cream flavor. I didn't actually end up getting any ice cream at the Baskin and Robbins though, because it was really early in the day and we went to see a movie at like 11 o'clock and I thought that's a little too early for ice cream. And I was gonna pick some up afterwards and then I forgot, so boo. But I'll just have to go to the cinema again quite soon and um, pick up some of that ice cream. But yeah, a bit obsessed with going to the cinema at the moment. But a little disclaimer before I tell you what we went to see. And that is that I am absolutely obsessed with gothic novels. Um, when I was at school, when I was studying English literature, um, I studied gothic novels as something for my GCSE and that kind of um, extended into what I decided to do for my A-levels. And 
I absolutely love gothic novels, so I'm talking about, you know, Dracula, Frankenstein, um, Gormenghast books. Also, I consider Jane Eyre to be a gothic novel, and I love Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre is my ultimate favourite book of all time. Absolutely ultimate book, favourite book of all time. And a little side note, little tangent, Kristen of Vulan Vine Yarns has just started dyeing up Jane Eyre themed yarn and it is taking every fibre of my being to not just buy all of it. Luckily, I missed out on her most recent update because I thought it was an evening update and it was actually a morning one. Um, <laughs> so I was planning on buying some of this Jane Eyre yarn, but I didn't get the opportunity. And I was like, Do you know what? That's probably for the best because I will bankrupt myself. And um, my 50 points for Gryffindor is completely out the window if I just buy all of her yarn. But Jane Eyre, one of my favourite novels of all time. In fact, my favourite novel of all time. But I am an absolute obsessive with with gothic novels. And in particular, just horror in general. I would say horror films are probably one of my favourite, if not my favourite genre of movies. Uh, not something that has always been the case. <laughs> I used to be absolutely terrified of horror movies as a child, but as I've got older, it really is just the only thing that I want to watch. Scary movies, horror movies, and in particular if they're gothic horror, then I am just sold. That all being said, the first film that Emerson and I went to watch last week was a film called The Boy, which is a gothic horror film. I believe it's kind of, it felt very, very, very loosely based um, around the kind of themes of Turn of the Screw, if you've ever read Turn of the Screw another gothic novel. The story is a young American girl goes to English house to be a nanny to this young boy. But when she meets this boy, um, he's not actually a real boy. He's a life-sized doll of a boy and the parents are behaving as if he is a real boy. And the whole point is that their own child died in a horrible fire and they are now believing that this boy is their son. And she thinks, oh, that's so silly. It's just a doll. And they're obviously just dealing with some really intense grief. And and then things start to happen. And is this, is this boy actually, a, you know, is it a ghost? Is it this? Is it that? And yeah, it's that kind of a movie, which is exactly the kind of movie that I enjoy. <laughs> the leading kind of actress was Lauren Cohen, who, if you watch The Walking Dead, she plays Maggie in The Walking Dead, and I'm a huge Walking Dead fan, so it was really, really lovely seeing her do something completely different to The Walking Dead. And I would say, this kind of film is never going to kind of change the face of, of movies or anything like that, but if you enjoy that kind of film, most likely you will enjoy The Boy, because it keeps you guessing through the entire story. It never kind of is just about one thing. It starts off being a horror movie, uh, kind of what goes bump in the night kind of film, but it it evolves into something a lot more than that. And it's incredibly interesting, the way that they deal with the, the ideas and they deal with the genre is just fascinating. So if you are a horror movie fan, if you're a gothic horror movie fan, go and see The Boy. I loved it, Emrys loved it. It was fantastic. I did try and take some knitting into the cinema with me. I was working on my four founder socks this week and I thought, oh, perfect, vanilla socks from the cinema. I was so enthralled with this movie that within five minutes of getting my knitting out and starting a row, I dropped a stitch. <laughs> so not much knitting was done um, in that film, but that's fine because it was great. So you should go and watch it. The other film that we went to see this week was something a little bit different. Uh, it is 10 Cloverfield Lane, which is kind of vaguely based in the same universe as Cloverfield, the movie that came out a few years ago about kind of monsters invading the earth and that kind of stuff. And I never saw Cloverfield and I didn't see it because everyone said that the kind of camera gave them motion sickness because this is what it was like the whole time. So I never went to see that because I didn't want to get motion sickness, but we saw 10 Cloverfield Lane and it is starring John Goodman, who obviously John Goodman, but I am proud to say that the thing that I always think of with John Goodman is that he did the voice of, of Sully in Monsters, Inc. That's that's just my thing. Um, also, um, Mary Elizabeth 
Winstead, who, if you've seen Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which is an amazing film and you should watch it if you haven't, she played um, Ramona Flowers in that. And also John Gallagher Jr., who I adore because John Gallagher Jr. was in the original Broadway cast of Spring Awakening, which is one of my favourite musicals. He played Moritz in that. And he was also in The Newsroom, which was fantastic. And I also kind of love him because he looks a little bit like Emrys. <laughs> and so when I'm watching him on the big screen, I kind of like, oh, look at Emrys doing this movie. It's really interesting. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's pretty much a three-hander between those three actors for the majority of the film because the story is Mary Elizabeth Winstead's character gets into a car crash and wakes up in what can only be described as a bunker with John Goodman who is telling her that he rescued her, he saved her life and she can't ever go outside because there's been some kind of event which means that the air outside has been corrupted and that something has happened. At first, you don't exactly know what's going on, um, but if she leaves this this shelter, she'll die. And he basically says the rest of the human race is probably dead because of this event that's happened. It's, it's very psychological. You don't know exactly what's going on. You don't know who to trust. You don't know whether or not something actually has happened or whether these people are just kind of crazy or what's going on. And it was great. Keeps you on the edge of your seat. Again, not much knitting done. More knitting than in the boy, I would say. More knitting than in the boy, but I just got to the point where I was on the edge of my seat and I was like, I'm not, I'm not concentrating on the knitting as much as I should. I'm completely absorbed within this film. So I put that to one side. But I did finish those socks this week, so it must have helped a little bit, huh? But <laughs> yes, again, I would seriously recommend 10 Cloverfield Lane to anyone who enjoys that kind of keep you on the edge of your seat psychological kind of not quite sure who to trust type movie. Emrys and I both really enjoyed it. We both actually said that we preferred The Boy, but I think that's just because the genre of that film appeals so much more to both of us. Two incredible films this week, you guys, and definitely I'd recommend you seeing both of those. In terms of other things that I've been watching this week, Emrys and I actually started re-watching the first series of True Blood, and I loved True Blood when it was on the TV. I really, really loved it. By the time it got to the last season, I was so sick of it. <laughs> because I hated what they did with it, I think that it just got really, really ridiculous, and it kind of tainted the whole feeling of the programme for me. But when you go back to the first season and you watch that and you see how good it was when they started out, it's really reminded me how much I loved it. So getting my vampire fix as well. The other thing that we've been watching is the new season of Game of Thrones is going to be coming out relatively soon. I believe it's in maybe about a month or so it's coming out. And Emrys came up with the bright idea of let's rewatch every single episode of Game of Thrones that's been on before. <laughs> before the new season comes out. So that's what we've been spending a lot of time doing. So when I've been knitting and working on all these projects, we've pretty much just been sitting and watching Game of Thrones, which is always fun. <laughs> I love Game of Thrones. It's one of my favourite, favourite programmes. I'm particularly enjoying watching the first season because it has Joffrey. And evil though he is, I I genuinely think that the the guy who plays Joffrey how young he is in the first season. I think he's incredibly talented to portray such an evil character. And yeah, it's just brilliant. Love Game of Thrones. So many good programmes are coming back onto the TV as well because Outlander's coming back in like two weeks. That means I need to finish my Outlander shawl so I can wear it while I watch Outlander. Well, that's about it this week, you guys. Um, I feel like we've dealt with a lot. Um, a lot has been going on inside number 23 this week, like I've said. I will be posting an additional video this week. Um, you may notice we are at the last episode of the month. This is my last episode for March, and I haven't given you an update on 50 points for Gryffindor. I know. Um, it's something that I have been doing regularly in the last episode of the month. However, as I said previously, I am wanting to change things up a little bit for 50 points for Gryffindor. So I shall be posting an additional video this week with the details of that and of how that has impacted my points so that I can start April with a completely fresh kind of set of points going ahead and with the with the new scheme in place. 
Thank you so, so much as always for tuning in to my podcast. I do upload every Monday, so I will see you all again um, next Monday with some more yarny goodness and hopefully a lot more sewing goodness too, if all goes well and my delivery arrives on time. But for now, I just want to say a huge happy Easter to all of you. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend and that you have a great start to this new week. But for now, happy sewing, happy knitting, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye! Rolly. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Rolly loves yarn just as much as I do. <laughs> so the yarn was a bad idea. Wasn't it, Poochie? Was it a bad idea? <laughs> Got anything to say this week about knitting? Or sewing? Yarn in general. Aww. Apparently not. <laughs>